Seminole Headlines 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV begins now. That's Ira. There's Corey. I'm Jeff. And we want to say it right from the get-go. Yay, sausage. Corey, have you been able to manipulate the hat for our friends at Registers or no? No, but I have worn it uh, to protect my head when I was out on the field with Brady the other day. And I sometimes you just don't have you, – you don't care how you look. And that's how I am with hats now. It's, especially as you get closer to our ages. Um, right. Yeah, and uh, by the way, just letting people know, this is a recorded version of Yay Sausage. We recorded a little bit uh, before the live show today because of uh, some logistics at the, at the station, right? So, um, that is correct. But yeah, Register Sausage is uh, still the best sausage. I actually had a guy, a uh, gentleman, come up to me at the baseball game, FSU's game, I guess Friday um, against Louisville, and he comes over to me, he kind of whispers to me like, Kind of like, hey, just between me and you, is that sausage really good? <laughs> and I'm like, like I'm gonna say no, man. It's terrible. It's the yeah, worst. Thanks sausage. for asking. But I'm just yeah. telling you, it's between us. Yes, man. Registers is awesome. It's great. It's fresh. It's all natural ingredients. It's not filled. Here's a little secret, a little dirty secret about the sausage industry. Mm. There's the phrase you don't know what one know what's in the sausage. Some of these sausage companies just fill fillers and chemicals and different things to to. To uh, expand the weight of Save money, it. buddy. They're saving money exactly. is what they're doing. Yeah. And that's not registers, man. It is all delicious pork sausage, natural ingredients. We can't speak highly enough uh, about them. And uh, the empire grows, man. If you're in uh, down to Central Florida, over to Jacksonville, up to uh, the ca- ca- up into the Carolinas now, mm-hmm. Georgia, and then uh, west, obviously, to the home front, where it uh, all started in the panhandle of Florida and into Alabama, go get your registered sausage, register sausage at your local grocery store. If they don't have it, start with peace. But then, you know, sometimes you got to elevate. You got to escalate. Elevate the level of di- discourse there with a little yeah. frustration. Yeah. Or, or Absolutely. you can go to register, or you can go to registermeats.com and have it delivered to your house with no Unless mess. Unless you're in Alaska. And, uh, yeah, we still don't deliver to Alaska. It's, no. You got to join civilization, guys. Mm. If you're still, if you're in Alaska watching headlines, just come, come back to the, the the mainland. We did have a guy. Do you remember we had a guy say that he watched headlines from Alaska that he had moved there like eight years prior? I don't know if he's around anymore. He hasn't shown up in the chat in Pro- probably years. Not. I mean, I mean, odds are no, yeah, he's not. No, no, he's no, probably no. was killed, right? Yeah, yeah. R, R is killing people. Yeah, he's yeah, maybe was like the serial killer himself. Yeah, yeah, but he's more likely to be the victim. I think. Uh, well, what do you think the ratio Alaska, is? We had an Alaska listener. I know that. What do you think the ratio is of serial killers to non-serial killers in Alaska? Well, you got to remember some of it. Some of it's not just serial killers. Some of them are running from societal norms that they don't yeah. want to put up with. It. Some Responsibilities. Of them like, yeah, renegade hippies. Some of them are running from parental responsibility. Some of them don't want to have a job. They want to live off the land. And if Would you, you fisherman? If you're a fisherman that gets in a barroom brawl and kills people every time you get in a barroom brawl, like you've done that six times in your life, I don't know that that makes you a serial killer. Right. Right. You know, it's just yeah. a guy that kills people in brawls, and that's that's what yeah. Alaska is filled with. It's a guy you don't want to get in a fight with. Correct. Would you guys, Would you guys, if you went off the grid, would it be to the tundra, the northern tundra, or would it be to the woods, the Carolinas, or would it be like, would you try to like sneak into Mexico? I don't know if you sneak into Mexico. I guess you just walk. Also, I feel like you're still on the grid if you're in Mexico. Yeah, I, uh, you, people do that all the time. They 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 run away from their crime and go to Mexico. I'd go to like a Hampton Inn, probably like a a, a Hampton Inn, like off the highway, off the main yeah drag. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like maybe a Hampton Inn in somewhere in like Wichita. You know what I mean? Nobody's not the, in Wichita. Not the Hampton Inn in Wichita that everybody knows about. It's that other one about two three miles down the road. BTK was operating out there in Wichita for years. They couldn't find him until he was a taunter. At yeah. the Hampton Inn? Well, maybe. Uh, probably. He had a house. Well, he, he was so – Wichita was so secluded. He had a house right there. People <laughs> couldn't wave and, hey, how are yeah. you? Good oh, to boy. see you. Yeah. All right. So we returned to practice this week. That's a good thing. We're excited about that. The baseball team wins again. That's a series victory. I, I got to tell you, we talked about it, Ira, yesterday. I don't know if you heard the spot, Corey. It was riveting. We had a lengthy – Conversation, mm. Ira and I. It's really Meaty. becoming the norm again. It's becoming Meaty. the norm again. Well, good. I think yeah. that's what people want. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, Tom and I talked about this too. After the Clemson series, you kind of rightfully, I think, assumed that, man, this is going to be a bit of a struggle this year when we go to the bullpen. Florida State's still going to hit. 
because they hit in that series. They've hit in every series they've played this year. Uh, had the one little downturn against Notre Dame, but it was a series they swept. And you kind of like went through and realized, well, this lineup can really bang it. So, you know, the, the Achilles heel will be the bullpen. And I thought like it would be dramatic. Like you'd have nights where you're like, oh, this again. But man, the way those kids have responded in the bullpen, responded in the bullpen is kind of nothing short of remarkable because they've made the Clemson thing look like a complete outlier. Yeah, it looks like an anomaly. And it, yeah. it, if you go through the first 26 games, uh, those three are because it wasn't like the bullpen was struggling before that. And they've been just as good as they were uh, after. But that three games was uh, an implosion. I mean, but at, since then, uh, they've been good. And before that, they were good. So yeah, maybe I that's. Think, the... I think, honestly, honestly, I think you can kind of chalk up a couple of things there. A, that's a really good Clemson team with a really good lineup. But also, that is an insanely stupid and immature and obnoxious environment. Like, they didn't handle it well to yes, no. only to start. Yeah. yeah. That, all that nonsense, I think, got in their heads. They'll never see that again until they go to Clemson. I mean, that, that, like, that's, yeah. that's not going to happen. Nobody else is that obnoxious. No matter their desire to win, nobody hits the button every effing second after yeah. it. It doesn't happen. Yeah, Boston College probably doesn't, but, but the Boston College might not even have a PA guy. They don't even have anybody up there in the booth. Link, uh, Link, in, Link, Link, Link may have to turn on the lights when he gets there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Link. he has to mow. Let's play some ball around here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. So I think, uh, honestly, nobody will have to deal with that again. And looks like when they're not dealing with that nonsense and that sorry ass earworm, mm. they're fine. They're great. They're well. They're pretty good. How about that? Yeah. I was speaking of Clemson. Were you upset or uh, are happy that they didn't make the Final Four? I was happy. I don't root for Clemson. Why? Oh, Ira, not you. I, yeah. yeah. Um, I was. I was. Because of the, I, the I was makeup little, of the Clemson basketball team. I was a little torn. Um, I really don't like PJ Hall, mm, and I yep. really don't like the Gerard kid from transfer from Syracuse. Um, just for whatever reasons, I just don't like those two guys. Yeah. And uh, but I I kind of like Brad Brownell, like I, I think too. he's yeah. always been a nice enough guy. So I was kind of I was like Brad Brownell too. That's kind of weird. We all three I, like that guy. I was a little conflicted, just like I was with the LSU Iowa women's basketball game because I really don't like Kim Mulkey at all. Who does? But I like Flaugé and I like uh, I like um, what's her name? Angel, uh, Angel Reese. I like the, I the like way they all play. The people. I like. I sort of like all the people involved, not named Kim Mulkey. Exactly. On both teams. I'm fine with all the competitors. Yeah. I just don't give a damn about Kim Mulkey. <laughs> so I was kind of conflicted with that one too. So I've been usually it's like like when Duke plays, man. Like especially this Duke team, I just was I was celebrating for for hours after yeah. they lost. I don't like anything about that Duke team. But some of these teams, like I like the players, but not like the coach, or I like the coach, but not the players. So it's it's been challenging. I do want to say, and Corey, you 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 love college basketball, so not that you don't, Ira, but I would say, like in terms of historical runs, I know a lot of people want to point to that NC State team and say it's similar to the '83 team, but it's not. This NC State team was ass. Yeah, this NC State team wasn't any good. I still don't think they're any good. I loved. Did you see uh, the interview with DJ Burns? I think it was before or after that game the other night, and they were like, "What's been different about this team?" He's like. I don't know. Like guys are showing up to meetings. Like everybody's all in. <laughs> Started trying. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, man. That's it's why you suck during the regular season. But no man. indicator whatsoever. Not a blip on the radar. Nothing. When they came to Tallahassee and got their ass stomped, and Florida State dropped ninety on them, that dude had zero points. They and were zero up. rebounds. He, they he, were useless. Yeah. He couldn't. He couldn't stay on the floor. Like Florida State had gone small. He couldn't guard anybody, and he no. couldn't do anything because Florida State fronts the post, and they they make you work to get the ball in the post. Seven, That's one thing. And Fourteen. Jim Lamar's. Speed. Jim Lamar's brought that up. That he brought up a couple of games ago. That. You know, it's weird that nobody's really gone hard to front the post and deny him the ball because once he gets the ball, he's such a good yeah. passer. And, you know, obviously Duke Duke was basically like, we're not going to double team him. We're not going to let him be in pass, beat us passing. Um, and he had, you know, a tough time early a little bit. But but you, if if denying him the ball is probably the way to go because if it's not him, they're, they're not a special team by any stretch. No, God, of course no. not. But, but it's crazy. Like, I don't think anything – I can't remember another run like this in our lifetimes uh, where a team that wasn't good at all, that may not even made the NIT, probably wouldn't have accepted the bid because they'd given up on the season, 
won nine straight do or die games. Like literally the last nine games they played, if they had lost, their season's over. Yeah. And they're nine and oh. That's cr- they're in the final four. That's nuts. And, and really, Corey, if I'm not mistaken, only one of them featured a fr- flukish thing. They had the miracle the three force overtime. Right. Because the kid missed the free throw. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, they've kind of won the game, was the better team. Yeah, it was nothing didn't look yeah. fluky at all. No. And you're like, well, what happened in January, guys? Did y'all just not care then? Like, because they're you can see they got some skill. And hey, go back to Brownell real quick. I will say this. I, I didn't I wasn't I didn't like the thought of him getting to a final four and Leonard not getting to a final four. Right. I don't know why. Yeah. I was just like, come on, man, don't he doesn't he Leonard's been a Leonard's had a, a better program than him over this the This NC State years, team right? has no business. I well, know that's crazy. That's, that's just crazy basketball. And I think that goes back to, you know, look, going back to what was my guy at Georgia Tech that had the, the crazy run and then got fired Paul a Hewitt. Couple, Paul Hewitt. I mean that I think that just like college baseball, we decided a long time ago that that should not be a referendum on how good of a coach you are. Making the Final Four is awesome, and cynic, but man, there's been enough of these crazy runs where we yeah. can't use that as the just. That means this guy. I mean, this guy, the guy at NC State, may get fired in two years, and he would have yeah. got fired. If he would have got gotten bouncing. fired this yeah. year. It's two weeks insane. ago, he would have been fired. Yeah. yeah. I just one of the things I don't know as I get older if I'm just a curmudgeon, probably. It, I don't like the tournament because of it. I think it's stupid. It's like crazy. Like NC State's not one of the 50 best teams. This team is ass, and they could win it all. It'd be hilarious. So you just want all the one seeds to win? Yep. All right. yep. I hear yep. you, buddy. Yep. I, hear I absolutely you. do. I want yeah. every team that's actually good during the season to be good in the tournament. That's correct. Yeah. I don't I think, want some but, fluky nonsense garbage ass team to luck their way into the final four of the finals. I don't. I hate it. But I think the problem is there's just not those identifiable teams like there used to be. You know, like when we when we were kids, you know, I mean, back yeah. in the day, I mean, like, you know, you knew Duke or UNLV or, or who Kansas, right. where you knew those teams were going to be there at the end. These, this, you, know, you have no idea now. I mean, it's just other than UConn, it, you know, UConn's really man, good. UConn is inevitable. And, yeah. and that was a thing. Trust us, folks. We'll talk about Florida State football here right in a second. But the the one thing about it's not just Caitlin Clark that why why people are watching this sport again. You had uh, the girl from UConn, Paige Beckers, and then Juju Watkins. You have star power in that game. And at halftime of the biggest women's game of the year on Monday night, it was forty five to forty five at halftime. What was the score of the Houston Duke game, men's, at halftime? 23-22? 23. It was unwatchable. Much of the Duke-NC State game was unwatchable. Like It's like they can't make shots or they get overcoached or something happens, but the women's game seems much more free-flowing. The women's game now is what it used to – the men's game used to be back when we were kids with the star power. You would turn it into watching. parts of that, Corey. I'd say you were watching the two – two of the three best teams in, in the world uh, in, in women's college basketball last night, much of that other parts of the tournament has sucked. It, it's impossible to watch a lot of women's basketball. Let's not kid ourselves. You're not tuning into non Iowa, UConn or LSU games, but You're the not- best men's teams still play games where they have 21 points. At the oh, I, I agree. That's I think the both problem. Things can be true. Both yeah. things can be true. It's it's yeah. I, I, listen, I think college basketball in general has suffered greatly over the last number of years. And it breaks my heart. Cause I, I grew up loving it. I did love the tournament. I loved everything about college basketball. But, of course, that's changed dramatically. You don't have characters. They were all characters to Iris Point. You had, like, kids that you grew to hate more every year right. or yeah. love because they were built around, like, a four-year run or a three-year run. You had hey, Filipowski might be – <laughs> Filipowski might be becoming that guy. He might be the next Leitner yeah. if he uh, if he stays for another like, year or two. We all saw Georgetown's rise, and we saw Houston's rise, and we watched North Carolina and Duke and UNLV and Michigan, all these teams, and you'd see that freshman year, and you'd be like, oh, that kid's going to be good. And then yeah. he would do something quirky that you either liked or you hated, and then he'd come back that next year, and you'd be like, oh, he's gotten even better, and I hate him even more. By the time he was a damn junior, you had like a real referendum on that whole team and that whole system. Agreed. Not anymore. Not anymore. Nope. And, uh, and you know, I think the other thing about it, the other thing, about, I guess, from a positive standpoint is the barrier to entry is pretty low. I mean, like, the, the it's not – it's not hard to turn it around pretty quickly and to make a run. If you get a couple of really nice players, you could be a team. And look at Alabama's like roster. That. Alabama's starting five is like Sears is like the only guy that was there last yeah. year. Uh, NC State, most of that team was grad transfers and transfers. And so turning it back to Florida State, um, 
you know, they're going to have a whole new team. Obviously, Baba just went in the portal. Spears is gone. Uh, uh, Watkins is gone, I guess. like the, Tom, Tom House went in the portal of the aid, Corey. Mm. Damn it, Ira. Mm. I, I hadn't even that. had my coffee yet. My, my point is, my point is, so that's four guys in the portal plus four guys who were seniors at the end of last season. So you have 13 players on scholarship. So at the at the best case scenario, probably you're going to have only four or five returning players next season. Two thirds of your team is going to be brand new. So um, that could be a, a bad thing or it could be a great thing. And we'll just see how they, they do. Make the a run, Ira, Jeff, you could, Jeff, you're on this show too. I don't know why I keep talking to Ira. You're uh, trying to get me involved. Well, yeah, Jeff gets to talk all the time yeah. every day. I'm trying to get you, yeah, get you some Give shots me some early. Touches. Give, Give me some, some touches. touches early so you'll play right. some defense later. <laughs> Good um, luck. Good luck with that. It's like, it's like Jameis to KB early in <laughs> yeah. games, yeah. even, yeah. If, even when he's doubled. Let him know. I was thinking Michael you. Jordan to Bill Cartwright. Bill yeah. Cartwright would always shoot the first two possessions. He's like, yeah. all right, you're not touching it again. Go play defense, old man. <laughs> um, do you think we all think – I think we all think this is Leonard's last year coming up. Right. Seems it's seems likely. Like contract hasn't likely, been extended. Yeah. We're almost at we are into April. Um yeah. do you think there's any chance they go to the power brokers in these in the in the NIL space and say, We want to give him one last run. Pony up for a roster which gives him a real chance to make a run so we can end this on a high note. You're not gonna we're not gonna ask you to give NIL and not at the expense of football, but just find it in your heart to give him some money, us some money to put together a roster that can get him back to the tournament. I think that's an awesome idea, and I love it. And I actually kind of suggested that in the column I wrote a couple of weeks ago. I was like, if he is going to coach one more year at least, at least there needs to be a commitment to, to build a roster with NIL because otherwise, even if his last year is just getting punked yeah. 30 times, that's going to be awful. I mean, it would be better to, to just go in a different direction now. Um, so I'm with you in spirit. The problem is, man, for, from a reality standpoint, they're still trying to raise money for NIL for football. They're still trying to raise money for these facilities. So I just don't think they're in a position to do that. I agree with you. I think it would be awesome. And maybe there are some basketball fans, and we know there are some deep-pocketed Florida State basketball fans. Maybe they take it upon themselves to try to help do that. But but I, I don't think the school could do that because I just don't know that they're in a position to do it with so much else going on. So I think 100% that's correct, Ira. I, I agree, Corey. I'd love for that to happen. I don't see it happening. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody comes swooping in and decides that, you know what, Leonard shouldn't go out this way. We're going to do the right thing and ensure that at least we have – here's the one thing I say about basketball. You don't have to have a roster of great players. Give me two. Give me two Give me really two. good Yo, Utah. players. Two yeah. really good players. Then you're yeah. starting five and some role players. We'll be all and right. On that topic, real quick, I do want to touch on this because you know some people ask about like, you know, why didn't they make a change and, and why won't they make a change at the coaching staff and all that? Understand like the world of college basketball right now, and and you, we all get a sense of it. But when you hear some of the numbers behind the scenes Crazy. of, for example, the Louisville job when that came open. Part of the reason some of these high-profile coaches were considering it, I mean, they were talking about Bruce Pearl and uh, the guy Baylor and Drew and, like, these different names were out there. Louisville's made it clear that there's going to be a big pot of NIL money available for whoever takes that job, and they end up getting a really good coach. Well, if Florida State goes into the market to hire a head coach, they have to have that in place because the the first question a a new head coach is going to ask is, not what does my roster look like, but what's the NIL? Like, what what are my NIL, NIL resources? And yeah. I don't know that Florida State's in a position to be an attractive player in that space. Now, maybe that changes in a year or two, but I don't think it is right now. It probably changes when they get into one of the Super 2 conferences, and that's like yeah. about it. Yeah, I, I I think you're right. Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV continues in a moment. To be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the corner pocket. A cup of Joe, Java. 
brew, go-go beans, brain water, liquid lightning, wakey wakey juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not grassroots coffee. At grassrootscoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. Have you been injured on Interstate 10? I'm Jimmy Fasig of Fasig Brooks Law Offices. We've partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic cameras along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Let us help you get the proof you need to stand up for yourself and get fair compensation for your injuries. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Basic Brooks, 850-777-7777, offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Apple Yard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. This is Scott Trout of Cordell and Cordell. There are a lot of great dads out there. Sometimes those dads get divorced. For more than 30 years, we've represented men in divorce, confronting the pitfalls that could devastate your finances or harm your family relationships. While every situation is different, our goal is to get the best outcome for you and your kids. Set up a consultation and take the first step. CordellCordell.com. Lisa Cargis, Florida resident partner. Scott Trout, licensed in Missouri, Illinois, and Georgia only. 904-323-0000. One independent drive, suite 2200, Jacksonville, Florida, 32202. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Turns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. Ira, I'm glad you brought it up last segment because I've gotten a ton of emails and I've seen it on the boards and it's on Twitter and all that. People act like Florida State is being cowardly, and we're going to move on from basketball, but that they won't act, that they're complacent, that it's okay to be bad at basketball. But I do believe, as you kind of laid out, their hands are tied. They can't do anything. Even if they wanted to do something, now is not a time to do something. Well, I just don't know who you would get. You know, we've had the arguments in the past, like, uh, you know, going back 10 years ago when there was a movement to maybe make a change because Florida State hadn't made the basketball tournament in a few years. And, you know, the question then was, okay, what could they get? Well, to me, there's, there's a much smaller pool now because, again, there are schools that are making millions of dollars commitments. There are schools out there that are – putting budgets of three, four million dollars or more into NIL for a team of 12 players, 12 or 13 players, probably splitting most of that amongst four or five players. And it, again, if there's a commitment like that to Florida State basketball, we certainly have not seen it. I don't believe it's there. And until it gets there, I, I think it's going to limit what kind of coach you can get. Now, it doesn't mean you don't make a change. It doesn't mean you, you just say, okay, we're going to go with Leonard Hamilton forever. 
Uh, but I think it, right, it right, makes right, you right. ratchet your decision a little bit about how quickly you need to get in that space. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's in perpetuity when he only has one left, one year yeah. left on the on the deal anyhow. So, yeah, I, I, that's the thing. People are like, well, wait, are we held hostage? No, no, I'm just saying they're going to let the contract play out. There's no rush for this one year, right? right. Like, they, they, Go ahead, see what happens this year. That's why I'd like him to go out somewhat nearly on top, is whatever that means in the in the uh, framing of Florida State basketball. I'd like them to him to go out on top, but – uh, yeah, like when, when people hear Iris say, who else are you going to get? The counter could be, well, somebody that's not 75 years old, that's not essentially coming off three losing seasons. That would be their counter. But I get we all get what you're saying, right? Like in this short term right now, one more year, see what happens. Um, and then, you know, I, I think that a change is inevitable, obviously. And hopefully it's somebody either with Florida State ties or who's a really good basketball coach. And then, may, yeah, and then maybe over that time, over this next year, you have your situation buttoned up to where you know what conference you're going to be in, you know yeah. what your NIL resources are going to be. Your and now, projects. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're kind of moving in the right direction. So that, that seems to make the most sense. All right, so onward we go for the demand to talk about football, certainly, and uh, get to get back at it. It sounds like, and we've talked about it, but uh, – certainly that the defense led the way I have maintained that the defense will lead the way this entire spring, uh, that it's going to, first of all, that's the way these things typically work. Even when you have a veteran presence on offense, his defense is always ahead of offense in the early portion of practices. So spring is the case here, but especially true when you have a ton of new faces and a new quarterback learning a new offense, I can't imagine that it's going to be sustained excellence from the offense. There'll be big plays because they got big playability. But I think defense will carry the day for most of these scrimmages when we hear coaches' reports, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was the, the case the whole way. What do you guys make of the fact that it is clearly uh, Coach Norvell's intention to just throw the kitchen sink at all the new guys, and that includes DJU, right off the bat? Like, hey, he admitted this is the earliest they've ever scrimmaged. He's throwing everything at them. Um, that almost guarantees that it's going to be clunky. Yeah, I think uh, we're feeling a little ho part ho. I think is what's mm. going on here. Is that Smart. yeah? Is that the approach? as a great man once said? Yeah, <laughs> eloquently. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's it. It makes sense. I mean, you because what's interesting is you have, uh, especially with some of these veteran players, that you have some guys like DJ, obviously, and Malik Benson. Some of these guys have played a lot of college football. Roy Dell Williams, and uh, but they haven't done it in this system. So I, you know, it. I don't think it would make sense to really kind of go slow with them because right. they might be able to pick it up quickly. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of that because you have some of these younger guys who are in that as well, um, who get you know kind of caught up in that. So it's got to be a challenge, man. It's it's uh, that, and that's why I don't want to make like too many decisions about. I actually almost sent you guys a uh, a roundtable list of questions um, after the scrimmage on Thursday, basically looking at, okay, we've been out there for about a week and a half, close to two weeks of spring practice. What are some things we think we can make decisions on? But I didn't do it because I would have liked the content over the weekend because sure. things were a little slow this weekend. But I just didn't think it was fair. I just don't know that we really can make sound judgments or determinations really on much of anything because it's still so early. Yeah, I think, but uh, no, we can't. Uh, I think Norvell's starting to, they're obviously seeing some things they like or don't like right. and, and guys picking it up. I, I will say he's always done this though. Like he did it with, uh, I mean, he did it with AJ Duffy. Like he just threw him in and it's like, hey man, you're a college quarterback. Go, let's go run the offense. Did it with Brock Glenn. Now, last year, Brock Glenn as a true freshman in the spring looked a whole lot better and different than A.J. Duffy did his first year in the system. Like, you could tell there was something different about him. And I think that's a, that's an interesting thing to watch, man. Like, you, there's 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 not a lot of separation in what we've seen in the four days that we've seen um, of production between Brock Glenn and D.J. Like, D.J.'s going to start. We know he's the starter. But if Brock Glenn can take a step where he's competent and confident after what happened at the end of the year, let's not lose sight of how important that might be for the program down the road because – 63 to three can break some kids. Uh, you know, it just can. And and he doesn't seem broken at all. He seems as confident as he's ever been. Um, and that's a good thing because he might be the quarterback for two years. I would point DJ out that leaves. he has to have uh a he has to make a step forward, not because he's in trouble or anything like that, but Cromen Hawk has come yeah. in and looked like a guy that's highly touted to play quarterback, right? Big, strong, great arm. No chance that he's going to be starting anytime soon, but I have a feeling that he might be pretty damn good in a hurry. 
And so if you're Brock Glenn, you, you got to fin that off going into yeah. next year after this season when we assume DJ is going to be the quarterback. And also, you obviously should make a, a big leap forward given the opportunities that you've had uh, over the course of the year, over the last year. So I, I won't be surprised if, if, if what we see is Brock looking really good and people ending up kind of with the idea that if something were to happen to DJU, knock on wood, it doesn't, but like he misses a series or misses a game or a quarter or something, that you'd feel okay about Brock coming in, that you wouldn't be all that worried. We spent a lot of time in the last couple of years being very concerned that if Jordan Travis got hurt, they were right. screwed. Yeah, well, the, and one of the big differences between – And they Brock, were. They were screwed. <laughs> yeah. And the the thing with Brock is – and. You know, I, I just I can't even envision a scenario where he would lose his confidence. I mean, that dude just right. that's how he that's well, how he true. is. He, I he mean, checked to a pass play, nursing a lead at yes, the swamp. Yes. In an undefeated that, season with three minutes left. That's right. Good. Call exactly. There. So so <laughs> I don't think I don't think he looked at the 63 to three as a reflection on his inner abilities <laughs> or, or as a not. player. So um so I don't think that's going to happen. And I think that's good. But it also doesn't necessarily confidence doesn't necessarily translate to success on the field. Um, I still think, I mean, to me, it's, you know, and I think some of the, some people in the fan base get nervous anytime we say that Brock looks good or there's not a, like, as you said at the beginning of this, there's not a huge separation between him and DJ where I think there is a huge separation between him and DJ is just game experience. Yeah. And the guy has played three years as a starter in college football. He's seen things and, and he's going to be able to handle things in a much better way. And as he gets more comfortable in the system, what I do wonder it, with DJ is, do you think there'll be like an epiphany where we where we we're watching a practice and go, okay, he's got it now. Like he feels comfortable. This is the guy. Or do you just think it's going to be a gradual process where it looks better at the end of the spring, and then when we see him in August after they've had the whole summer, that it, it looks even better? Or do you think there'll be a moment where we say, okay, this is the guy? No, I think it's the latter. What you said there. I think it'll be gradual. But by the way, Corey and I pointed this out. We were standing next to each other watching practice. I like the fact that it is pretty apparent to me that DJ understands that the, he has these outlets, right? He could dump it down anytime he wants. In Mike's offense, there's always that outlet. Mm -hmm. But he refuses to do so in a practice. He wants to challenge down the field. Especially seven on seven. Especially in the seven on yeah. seven. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's the point, right? I mean, he knows he can hit that check down. Now, there will come a time where they will say, okay, look, man, we need you to do this because sometimes that's the only thing that's going to be there and you need to get comfortable checking down here but you know i mean i love that he's challenging the defense and he's challenging with plays down the field because he's got a cannon for an arm it's the strength of who he is he's big and strong he can fit it in there and he can get the ball down the field so i've enjoyed that but yeah he's oftentimes just a shoot checking down in seven on seven he's like ah, i'm not doing all that well and if you're mike norvell if you have any questions about whether or not he's seeing the the underneath stuff I mean, I think that's where he can create situations in these scrimmages to set up those Take scenarios away, yeah. where it's obvious that, okay, th nothing over the top is going to be there. you got to go. And again, I just assume, and I think we all assume, the guy's played so much college football that it's he's making that decision. It's not a matter of not seeing that there's anything else available. Well, we watch guys, him look right at the guy and then just decide. Yeah, nope. yeah, he's not, <laughs> he knows he's there, but he's yeah. going to roll out and – and try to do a scramble drill with one of the receivers. Have you, have you guys seen a position yet? Uh, and Jeff, well, Jeff, you're not allowed to answer this one because we know what your answer will be. Ira, have you seen a position yet where you're like, okay, once the spring comes, the portal opens back up, there's going to be some guys that leave. Clearly, they're not going to have 15 scholarship receivers on this football team. Some numbers are going to open up. Is there a position where you're like, yeah, they need to – after what I've seen, they might need to hit You don't know what my answer is going to be, Corey, and I'm going to answer it after Ira gets done answering it. Damn it. I didn't get to hear your question. Was it? Are you saying that they definitely need to get people? Or no, I'm asking, has there been a position that you think they de they need to go add another piece to that position? Because they're going to lose some guys after the spring, yeah. so some roster, some roster spots will open up. Uh, now, remember, it's only been four practices, and two of them weren't even in pads, so it might be hard to make a, uh, uh, you know, a judgment. Um. I think from a depth standpoint, I, I think you're teetering a little bit defensive tackle. Um, That's the right answer. Ira got it right. I think, you know, I'm not saying it's it's a desperate situation, and I don't even know that they need a – Tom and I talked about this a little bit on the Smash last night. Uh, it's not like they need to go get a, a Braden Fisk, but I do think they can. They're, you can go get a you Braden Fisk. Hey, do it. It's, 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 it's a guy named don't Corey Clark yourself, says – Go ahead and get another Braden Fisk. It's not against the law to get another Braden Fisk. <laughs> go for um, it. 
But uh, I do think they need another competent guy. I think they can get by, especially if Dirk Jaiway, if that becomes his home and he and he's and he's fine there. Um, but you know, probably a little bit thin there. But yeah, I don't think there's anywhere else. I mean, you can make an argument, maybe linebacker, um, but that's only because we really haven't seen it yet. Like I don't know, I don't know that they're that they really need another linebacker, but we just we haven't gotten confirmation yet that either Sean Murphy or OJ Graham or somebody one of those guys is gonna step up and be the other starter with Lundy. Call him OJ. I like it. That's is that what they call him. Is they, they call him OJ? That. That's I a cool so. name, nickname. Or maybe I just made it up. It's Omar Graham Jr. So Right. Yeah, I would have said defensive tackle too. Corey thinks I was going to say linebacker because I always right. do. But but I uh I say I say defensive tackle as well. They could use another body there, in my opinion. For depth purposes, I agree. I think the starters are gonna be really good. Um, and then I would probably add another linebacker also for depth purposes. They may not, yeah, you know, like I, I the starters will be fine. Um, but I I think they probably need maybe one more guy that you can trust if he's out there. I mean, you know, don't just willy nilly take a guy. So uh, that will be fun to watch. We always sit around really concerned about who they're going to lose, but in this day and age and the effectiveness of Mike Ravel in the portal, I get excited about who they might target to bring in. Yeah. Since, well, that's the thing, right? That's the age we live in. Since Corey's uh, presenting questions, I'm going to present a question. Okay. This is a question we got last night on the smash, which I, maybe somebody will ask something similar in hour two. We'll see, but but I, I'm going to jump the gun. I, I thought this was a really good question. Are there any positions that you feel like are going to be better in 2024, individual positions, than they were in 2023? Um, I think that's a pretty interesting question because I think a lot of people, I don't think most people think this this team could be better than last year, but you're hoping it's going to be on the same level. And what positions do you think could be better this season? And we're going to answer it next when oh, we return to Signal Headlines on 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Honey, can you go up in the attic and put a few things for me? Uh, sure, honey. Well, this is going to be fun. Where's that light switch again? Whoa, can't stand there. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that was. Oh, why am I up here? There has got to be a better way. <laughs> Honey, are you okay? There is. The Southeast Portable Buildings. Call them today. 850-580-6400. That's 850-580-6400. No need to get up in that attic any longer when you can call Southeast Portable Buildings. They have sizes to help with the smallest space needs to the largest. Call them today. 850-580-6400. That's 850-580-6400. Or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Still don't know what that thing was in the attic. <laughs> Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to registermeats.com. That's registermeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Sausage. Per Ira's question, well done with the tease, sir. That is a veteran radio move on your part. Uh, what position group, to remind people, perhaps people just tuning in, do we think has a chance to be, or do we think has a chance to be better than uh, any of last year's uh, segments? Uh, and and I, I want you to answer first, Corey. I, I don't know. The one I, the one I think, like, are we talking – are cornerbacks their own position so, or so, secondary? So that's kind of where we ended up. I, I I I gave it to Tom first. Tom said corners. I was thinking more like position group meaning secondary. And I, I said if I had to pick one, I would go with secondary too. But he went with cornerbacks, and I think that's probably the right I answer. I think the, the I maybe, but the because we think Azari is making a leap into being like there, potentially a early round, first roundish type pick. Yeah, he's got a higher ceiling. Sure. But Fentrell still, I mean, I think, and also another thing, fentrell has been better. It's only been right. four practices, but but Fentrell just looks like he's a uh, more engaged, uh, more excited to be uh, playing football at Florida State this spring than he was last spring when he got here. Uh, so that's been nice. But last year you had Azari as your number three guy. That's a pretty good rotation. Renardo, NFL guy, Fentrell, uh, solid college quarterback, and then Azari, a, a burgeoning star. So it's hard to say when you lose Renardo Green. And we don't know who's going to be that third guy that it's better. But that's the only one that even comes to mind as being possible because of the leap Azarie might make. 
Yeah, and I th- but I think those corners, your starters, your starters are going to play the majority of snaps. I honestly think they forced Azari in on the field sometimes last year just because they yeah. wanted him to, to be out there. I think you can play two corners 90% of the snaps. And if those are your two corners, I think they're they're better. Renardo's great, but I think Azari has a higher end to just make some of the wow plays. Um, yeah, agreed. And, yeah. Agreed. Game changer. I think secondary in general, I would just say big picture secondary, I think, so, has a chance to be better. I agree. Um, because uh, I think Earl Little Jr. is going to be really, really good too, and uh, Shaheem should have his best year. And I, I well, mean, and you're not losing like a a really good Akeem Dent because he was banged up. You know, Akeem Dent was great in the Florida game, but it's not like you're losing a safe because that's your only lo- that's your main loss is Akeem Dent at safety. We don't know who's going to take over, but it, Akeem throughout the year wasn't himself. He wasn't the guy that ran a four three eight at the pro day. The yeah, no, part I, about, I, sorry, Ira, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, yeah, I, that was what I, I agree. The secondary as a whole, and I think there's a bunch of guys that are have the potential to be real. I mean, Earl Little, I think, is real, has been very impressive since he came in. You add in, uh, um, you know, you, some of those young guys now that are developing, Conrad Hussey and Jalen Barker. Uh, you know, I just think there's a lot of potential. KJ Kirkland, there's a lot of potential in that secondary um, that, yeah, I think that group could actually end up being better. But corner, if I had to pick one spot, would probably be it. I want to point out that it's an interesting question because I get that at their highest level, the talent of a Keon Coleman is a healthy Keon Coleman, let's say, uh, is is better than what you have here. But I actually do think you could make a case to project the more productive wide receiver core than what you had last year. I do too. I don't think I've seen it so th- far through four practices, right. though. That's my caveat. That's my pushback yeah. a little bit to that. I haven't seen one of those guys be like, oh, man, that's an NFL player right there. That's a great play. That's You've a great seen Destin Hill good. look worlds better than he did a year ago. That's and- You're right. And Destin Hill, to me, through the, again, four practices, he's been, to me, the most impressive guy. And you're right. I think the the floor will be much higher. The depth is certainly better. But you just don't know if you have those two top end guys that are the, mismatch nightmares. Yeah, and I, and you guys watch you guys have watched uh, probably all the one on ones. I have not watched really yeah. many at all of the one on ones. I'm curious your guys' takes on this because to me the what concerns me about that receiver group from when when I watch them in seven on seven or eleven on eleven is yeah man they're they're guys that can run fast and they can make plays and and if they're you know open they'll catch it. How are they with the contested catches? Because that's where Keon was so good. That's where even Johnny. Johnny of gets course, credit, yeah. blame, but Johnny made some great contested catches. Are you seeing contested catches from those guys? Because to me, that's going to be a big, that's going to be something, a question we have to see answered. Yeah, I think that they're going to have to obviously grow into it. You know, yeah. I, I like Corey's saying, I, I think I'm solely making the argument that I could reasonably project that enough guys will take a step forward, that they could be more productive because they're going to be a lot deeper. So they, you know, they could take a huge step forward at that position. Plus, you have a big armed quarterback that's going to challenge down the field. So, yeah, I don't know yet, Ira. And not enough practices, right? And I don't get to see we none of us get to see the scrimmages. So, I mean, that that's the hard part. But I do think Hakeem is going to make contested catches. He's a big body. He's already made some contested catches. If Kentron Fortier can stay healthy, he's going to make yeah. con- uh, contested qu- uh, catches. He's a big bodied kid. Uh, good Lord, I guess we could probably say that about some other guys within that group. I don't know if Darion Williamson or whomever, you know, I mean, like they've got some dudes uh, and then they have all of that speed. It's just so silly. Uh, you know, again, I, I think that Benson's going to be very, very good. Um, they've got some fun guys, some fun options. And Destin Hill has had an awesome camp so yeah. far. So. But but to answer the question, no, you don't see it at the, it's clearly the level you saw it last year with, with yeah. Keon and Johnny so far. Um, so with, far, the, with the yeah. contested catches, uh, now they just yeah, was a freak. That was what he did better than everybody else, right. maybe in the country. I mean, but that's it was what also it was yeah. Johnny. It was their game. Like, that's their um, game. We're going to exactly. throw it up to fourteen. Right. We're going to throw it up to four. If you if you defend it, you defend it. But that's going to be there. Good luck trying to defend that. Most most teams couldn't when they were healthy. This this receiver core isn't going to be as good as that because wh- how could they be? But they will be. They might be even harder to defend. Game plan for, I guess. I, yeah, I they I can think. run away from you. You knew, yes, you knew what the game plan for Florida State was going to be. They're going to take shots down the sidelines with those two guys, uh, they're, especially in Death Valley that day. They're not. That's not part of this. I don't see that being a part of this game plan a lot. But they're going to have guys from the slot running posts. 
they're going to have dudes on the outside just running by you or trying to. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen, you know, it's, it's interesting. Hakeem this month, Hakeem's not been bad. He's been perfectly fine. I would like to see that dude maybe separate himself a little bit, but that's a lot to ask. He's a redshirt freshman that uh, missed a lot of time and is coming off an injury, but he's a guy, they have like three just wild cards. He's a wild, I have no idea how good he's going to be. Jalen Brown, the last practice I saw looked great. How good can that kid be? He's a redshirt freshman. Malik Benson's never been a ca- guy counted on to make a bunch of plays. And then we've already talked about him five times. Destin Hill, that's a wild card. He might be awesome. I don't know. He looks really good I, in I practice. I feel like both would have been really good last year at the end of the year if they'd been healthy. I think Hakeem is yeah. a true sophomore, is he not? He is. Oh, yeah, yeah I keep saying redshirt true. freshman. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a true sophomore, sophomore, but he's going to take a step, and I think he'll be a very good receiver. And Destin Hill, by the way, uh, I, we know he was on the path to be getting a lot more looks, and then he got hurt. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Those dudes got hurt. It was not about ability. And, yeah. Yeah. and Hakeem, by the way, had completely bought into blocking. That's why he was getting more reps, and then he got hurt. And damn it, man, that's the story of the last season. The offense yeah. had a bunch of guys riddled with injury. And it, it it could just look different, you know, in terms of like those – because so. what I'm thinking about is like those third down catches. So it's third and seven, yeah. things like that. Well, where I think – it may be Malik Benson, Ja'Kai Douglas are those guys, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like Micah Pittman, you know, those kind of slot guys that, that can make – because I think Benson, one thing we've seen so far from him is I think he's – he will – he's he's comfortable in traffic. I mean, we've yeah. seen he's him make some – He's got good hands. Yes, he's got very good hands. So those guys could fill that role. Maybe they're not the big body guys who could post up defenders, but you know, they're sure-handed. But then you've got all these other guys who can make the big plays. I, again, that's my only concern is I just want to see those guys. Can they be dependable – in, in those big situations. Cause look, man, Darion Williamson is t- a talented guy, but we've been waiting for four years yeah. to see him be a guy who you can depend upon. Poor Portier tier is the same deal. Like I get it. It's injuries or whatever, but he also has not been that guy. You got to depend on somebody. We only, we only have about three minutes left in this hour, but I want to ask you this because the only other place that I would have looked on the field and I understand there's no Trey Benson here, but they're pretty loaded at running back, guys. They, that's a deep running back room, and I think there's some guys that will emerge as consistently good players there too, maybe more than you had a year ago. I'm yeah. really curious to see what they do with the yeah the carries there or or the reps. Yeah, yeah, because you feel, I mean, Keziah had a long run in the last practice. We watched like a legitimate like 50 yard touchdown run, uh, and he's a guy. All of them. Like I, I was telling Aslan the other day, it's like I keep forgetting Toa Feely's on the team. Right. Like just because and Toa Feely's good. He's made a lot of big plays on for this football team. He essentially won them the ACC championship game and the wild. Well, the defense did, but he he scored the lone touchdown. Um, he's a really good spot college football player that has made a lot of really big plays. But it's just like you forget about him, Kaziah. Uh, they don't have the they're they're not the home run hitters that Benson was. But co- collectively, there's a chance, right? There's a chance. Roy, Roy Dell Williams, Cam Davis, Jalen Lucas, Singleton. I mean, they've got dudes for days. And so Lucas, all especially. Ugly. Lucas is the guy that you kind of like, you're doing this. Like, how are yeah. they going to use this dude? What are they going to do with this guy? Yeah, I think it'll be a little bit more like what we've seen from running backs under Mike Norvell in the past. Like, Trey was so, I'm not going to say feast or famine. That's not fair. But it was so, um, there were probably more. Um, there were more plays that didn't get what they could yeah. have gotten yeah, because uh, his vision wasn't where it needed to be. But then he hit some home runs that had no business being home runs. Right. And so I think this will be maybe more consistency, but not as many home run plays. I think unless it's the game in general. I think, I think they're going to be better up front in the offensive line than they were a year ago. They've got a ton of depth at running back and a lot of versatility at running back. And I just happen to think that that's going to be the biggest difference in this year's offense because it'll allow them to challenge the ball down the field because you're going to have to come up to stop the run. I think they're going to be able to, to run the football. I really do. They they struggled to run last year with, yeah. with the exception of the home runs that you're pointing out. So is the is running back the you're not you're not expecting them to pick up another running back in the uh, in no the, I don't in think the portal. <laughs> Well, they better, they've got like seven of them. Yeah, yeah. they don't. They do not need a, a, another running back. But yeah, that see that that spawned a lot of fun conversation because Thanks. we we we're not saying that these groups are all definitively going to be better, but they have a potential both at wide receiver and running back. I think we think. And I also, think when you look at it though, right? Like when you look at this team, none of us here are thinking this team is better than last year's team. It's not constructed it, top end. It doesn't maybe have the talent, but the bottom end is better. Much like, better. 
uh, you know, I think the 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 depth chart is more talented from top to bottom than it was last year. But you probably don't have a Fisk and a Verse and a Keon. But you have some, again, good good college football players from top to bottom now. The one, the one, the one last spot I was going to say real quick because we've touched on it before is defensive end. You know, you're not going to have a Jared Verse, but I think you know that second team defensive ends could be better than what you had last year. Which, I mean, that's a big deal, man. If you're if you're rotating guys in, I mean, yeah. is Marvin Jones coming off the bench or is yeah. Sione Lola Hea right coming right. off the bench? Yeah, um, that group that group could be a, a a problem. That second group on the defensive line could be a problem. Hour number two headliner questions coming your way. Back in a moment. of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. You've heard about the thousands of patients finally getting relief from chronic joint pain thanks to QC Kinetics non-invasive treatments. And here's one who was determined to avoid surgery. Meet Vicki. The orthopedic surgeon said, well, you're going to need knee replacement sooner rather than later. I kept hearing commercials about QC Kinetics and thought, well, I'm going to check them out first. QC Kinetics has treated over 20,000 patients like Vicki around the country. People who were told they needed surgery but chose a more natural, less invasive approach that uses regenerative treatments to help heal and restore painful joints with no downtime. If QC Kinetics had not been what I expected, I would have gone through with the surgery, but I got so much relief and now pretty much pain-free that I don't have to have the surgery. Before going under the knife, you need to check out QC Kinetics. The consultation is free. Call today. Call QC Kinetics, 850-391-4280. That's 850-391-4280. 850-391-4280. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please uh, hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, how do you tell the kids to drink water? Eight hours? Don't worry about us. We're plumbing. At m and Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At m and Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name m and Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393 or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. m and Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. What will the Knowles do to follow up an unconquered 2023? WarChant.com, the market leader in FSU football and sports coverage, is the place to find out. Join the largest FSU fan community and talk several sports in WarChant's Travel Council and premium recruiting message board forums. Enjoy special access to multimedia elements like Wake Up WarChant, the Jeff Cameron Show, and Seminole Headlines, plus exclusive forums with FSU student-athletes and a members-only discounted garnet and gold. WarChant.com is your ultimate Seminole sports source. Head to WarChant.com and sign up today. Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Burt's Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Burt's Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting Burt'sOrthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H, Orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Burt's Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. 
Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show. Live and local on Real Talk 93.3. WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs hot tubs paired with easy financing options, making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotspring.com. That's TallahasseeHotspring.com. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We have partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. What will the Knowles do to follow up in Unconquered 2023? Warchant.com, the market leader in FSU football and sports coverage, is the place to find out. Join the largest FSU fan community and talk several sports in Warchant Travel Council and premium recruiting message board forums. Enjoy special access to multimedia elements like Wake Up Warchant, the Jeff Cameron Show, and Seminole Headlines, plus exclusive forums with FSU student athletes and a members only discounted garnet and gold. Warchant.com is your ultimate Seminole sports source. Head to Warchant.com and sign up today. Real Talk Fact number 82. There are three kinds of people in the world. Those who can count and those who can't. This is Real Talk 93.3. If Real Talk was a paycheck, you'd be getting a huge raise. More Real Talk right now on 93.3. Hey, this is Brian Kilmeade, and I want to hear from you, Tallahassee. Don't miss my show live from 9 till noon each and every weekday on Real Talk 93.3, Tallahassee's Real Talk Station. We know you're glued to your phone, so follow us on Facebook at Real Talk 93. Give us a like, and you're going to love it. We are the talk of the town. Really, we are. This is Real Talk 93.3. It's time for Seminole Headlines featuring Warchant.com's Jeff Cameron, Managing Editor Ira Chauffel, and Senior Writer Corey Clark. Hour number two, headliner questions coming your way. Appreciate you joining us. Appreciate our friends at Birch Orthodontics as well. Dr. Birch, MVP, her staff, second to none. I'll be visiting Dr. Birch very soon, I think in a week, it's on the calendar for another update on the long ride of Clark's rearranged teeth. Right. Do you think Corey and I could come? Like the I'll three of us? Come on by. I'll give you the time. Corey, it'll be a little early for you. I know you're doing a better job of getting up earlier than you used to, but uh, I think this is an 8 a.m. sharp appointment. Yeah, probably, probably going to pass on that. <laughs> Number one, I don't like waking up that early. I certainly don't want to wake, wake up that early. To, to see the... somebody else's kid at the orthodox. Hey, yeah. hey, it's not just somebody else's kid. I mean, Clark it Cameron. is. It is. I know it's I know it's Clark That's Cameron. That's the way Corey views me and everybody yeah. else. Is <laughs> just, yes, you're just somebody people. else. Just somebody else in if the way me, of me doing what I'd else. like to do. But yeah, that's okay. how but that's how great the experience is at Birch Orthodontics. That, that even if my kids aren't there, I want to go see Dr. Birch, <laughs> yeah. see the staff. She should uh, have bleachers. She should have bleachers in that should. where you're where you're doing the work. We talked about all... that with Hauser, how we want bleachers out in the outfield and kind of yeah. make it more likely to see in these SEC atmospheres. We should just do the surround Birch Orthodontics yeah. with people cheering. Doing the wave do good work. As Clark gets his uh, braces taken off. Uh, birchorthodox.com is the website. They do tremendous work. And, and the where this all started is a free consultation where you go in, you explain the situation, you you just you know say, hey, we need help. And Dr. Birch is awesome because she, again, she's got the dental uh, background, but also ortho, is an orthodontist 
and can sit down and tell you all your options. And sometimes they're difficult cases like young Clark Cameron, like Molly Schofel, my oldest was a challenging case. They do tremendous work and uh, we can't recommend them highly enough. And they'll just tremendous work, state of the art techniques, and also uh, just quality people. You know, I will say this, and we'll move to the questions in just a second. When they showed me the x-ray originally of all these teeth that were hiding up in Clark's cheek, like way above, and then no place to go. Shark teeth. I kind of I thought like, yeah, like a shark. I kind of thought, well, I don't care how great Dr. Birch is. How do you fix this? How do you yeah. create normalcy out of an alien? What do you do with this? And But they did it. They did it. It's, it's really quite amazing. Just saying. There is no case more difficult than Clark Cameron's case. So, folks, if you're listening out there, yeah. it can't be as bad as my youngest son. And look at him now, thriving. Thriving, filled with confidence, his straight teeth. Here we go. Questions. By the way, this is recorded, folks. We want to make that a, a, a clear again. Yeah, so if you're chatting at us, yeah. Yeah, if you're chatting at us, we're not seeing it. We recorded that a couple hours early. That's correct. Burke writes, is there any position group on this football team that you would trade in a heartbeat for last year's position groups? Ooh, That's kind yeah. of a fun question. Um, maybe defensive line, maybe. Probably. Or, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Probably, right? Maybe quarterback. Quarterback is yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because because you had Jordan, Jordan but the yeah. Backup situation wasn't great. No, year. but what are the odds that Jordan's going to get hurt and miss time? <laughs> when would that ever happen? When, I, well, you know what I mean? Did that even happen I, last I, year? I don't, I don't know, remember. man. I think, I think only defensive line, really. I think even, yeah. that, even then, yes, the, the, with Fisk and this time last year, I don't know that because you didn't know what Fisk was. We didn't, we, how could we? Um, I don't think you would have made that trade at this time last year. Linebacker. Yeah, but in a heartbeat. And I feel like, what are you giving up? Like, if you're making, yeah, I mean, yes, the linebackers last year were more experienced. And ton, ton of better. experience, ton of experience. Um, So there's got to be a, you know what I mean? Like, what are you giving up if you make the trade? I, because, I think yeah. you're right to it's, emphasize in a heartbeat. There doesn't seem to be like an in a heartbeat sort of answer. I would probably say, if, if we had to pick one, I'd say defensive line. Um, just because you knew what verse was. And, you know, we still don't know exactly what Daryl Jackson's going to be. We see what he looks like physically. We see what he looks like in practice. A motivated Daryl Jackson looks to be extremely impressive, but we have to see how it plays out over the course of a game. We've never seen him play like a real football game. That bowl game doesn't count. Um, so that, that I would say the defensive line. I don't um, think you do it in a heartbeat, though. I just think by the time it's all said and done, when we're in uh, the middle of next September or something, you might look at this defensive line as a strength. Oh, I like, definitely think it could be a strength. Maybe yeah. not as good. It's not got mm -hmm. Verse and Fisk, but the depth in the pieces you could roll out there where Fabian Lovett, you have, it wasn't really all that healthy. Um, if you have a healthy defensive line that can really um, um, sub in and sub out freely and still have good players, like like you said, Marvin Jones, if he turns out to be something really awesome and he's, he's your third guy. Can we just say, isn't he fun to look at? He's that definitely dude, fun to look at. Yeah, he's fun to look at. I'm going to assume he can play a little football because he's he's fun to look at. I mean, yeah, I didn't think it's, he was it's that not big. Yeah, it's not normal to be that size and move that athletically um, yeah. as he does. Uh, yeah, no, and that's a good question, and it's a good counterbalance to the question we had in the last hour, where you know we asked like, where are they going to be markedly better this year? What position is going to be better? There's not like a clear cut answer. There may be other corner and, and DB, but on the flip side there clearly isn't a position we're desperately concerned about if we're not no. jumping at that. Yeah. That answer. I, I, I will tell you, I have some concerns about an element of the tight end room. Um, I, they're not going to block <laughs> that, that tight end room is not going to be stellar at inline blocking. They're probably going to be really good at catching the ball though. And getting open. I think even Landon Thomas, right? But yeah, I Morlock can get open and make plays. He's a good player. He's not a great blocker yet. So we'll see. And I don't know that there's anybody in that group, in that room, that is going to help them in the run game as a blocker. So Jackson West can get there, maybe. We'll see. Jackson West has abs for days. Corey yeah. loves the abs. Yeah. Fixated. 
Um, what has been the most impressive, right, Garrett, going 23 and four in the past two seasons or having virtually no off the field issues with players since Mike Norvell has arrived? I, I'm going to go with the 23 and four. I'm going to say 23 and three. I don't recognize that fourth loss. Agreed. Um, so they uh, 23 and three is uh, is is more impressive, but uh, yeah, it's not even something. Uh, it's one of the things we always uh, praise Leonard about. Just like you knew his program wasn't going to embarrass you off the field. Now let's knock on some wood. But so far, yeah, there hasn't been. I would say the biggest off the field issue that Norvell had was bef- was the uh, Marvin Wilson thing. During COVID, before he'd ever coached a game or even had, you know, he had one spring practice before it was canceled. That's it. That's the only like off the field problem he's had. And even I thought that was ridiculous, but that's just me. I mean, yeah, it's I'll, not- go, I'll go with the 23 and three also. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, really quickly. Good day, gentlemen, writes Perkins. My question is redundant, but how much shame will you collectively feel in 2025? When we're throttling Alabama in our home opener and the mm. camera pans to the west side of Doak Campbell Stadium revealing a half full champions club part two. <laughs> it's a fair question. We I, play in Alabama. Well, I think his question I think is about the stadium and like what why I mean I get I I took it as he's he thinks like maybe people aren't complaining enough about them changing the stadium. Um and that, that's going to create a, a Champions Club type situation in those club seats that are going to be on the side. Uh, right. Or, but or also he, we are scheduled to play Alabama, so it's kind of funny. I yeah, mean, it's just, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, uh, first of all, personally, I'm not going to feel any shame. I mean, I didn't make these decisions. Uh, but as far as I mean, as a, as a fan base, I don't know, man. I, I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to actually work out. Like nobody knew the Champions Club was going to play out the way it played out. Um, I know people are, are are fearful. It's going to happen with the the sidelines as well. I don't know. I mean, I really. Don't I've been, at, you know, that. this. I really need to get off my ass. I've been asked twice to go over there and get the full tour and do the thing where they show you and project all what it's supposed to. My father did it when he was re upping his tickets, and then I got invited to come do it because they wanted me to talk about it on the air. And I just haven't gone over there. I haven't had time. I don't know what the finished product is supposed to be like. I, so I don't even know that I can speak on it just yet. Is it going to be just like the champions? Club? Uh, I don't think it is. Right. It's not supposed to be, but the problem is you just don't know what people's behavior is going to be. Like do people, there is going to be a club that they can go back into, but so, it's not going to be the whole. I don't think it's going to be. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's going to be quite as per se. Per because now I will say this, because when you watch a Falcons game and I know both of you guys are typically locked into Falcons games mm-hmm. on Sundays, yeah, twice um, a year now. Th- when they come back for the third quarter of the Falcons games and when they're playing at Mercedes Benz, it looks like there's been a bomb threat. Like there is nobody in the lower bowl. They're all still in the concourse eating or drinking or watching TV or in the bathroom. And you do wonder the optics of Florida State's playing Alabama. And if your club level is the, it's like the Florida State basketball games when there's nobody in the part of the crowd you see, even when they say, were great. I'm going to venture a guess. I think I do know what's going to happen. When they're playing bad teams, it's going to look awful and there'll be nobody in the stands. When they're playing really good teams like Alabama, people will be in the stands cheering their heads off. I mean, they were, the, the the crowd against North Alabama was pretty good, man. That was that was a nobody. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you it was can't just say if not, if people were doffing their cap in a night game, kind no, of. No, yeah, but I think the yeah the point is you're you're yeah kind of like NBA games is the same thing. I mean, like there you know there's there are so many amenities in modern stadiums that 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 draw you away from the action on the field. So it's just it's not what college football was when we were kids. It's not That's it's, correct, but it's not ever going to be. And I think my guess is. If you look at other modernized college football stadiums, there's probably similar phenomenons going on. If the action's not riveting, yeah, man, I'm going to go take it back in the air conditioning and, and have a couple of cold ones. Well, but you I, could also admit that kind of sucks. Like, I, I don't watch Florida games and see just an empty row, a, a huge empty swaths of crowds when they're playing a, te- a game that But matters. I don't think they've done that to their stadium. Well, that's I mean, I think what I'm saying. But right. th- so that's that's my point. I'm not, that's my point is modernizing it. But, makes but it I look guarantee, like a yeah, but Corey, Corey, yeah, you're right. You may not like it. None of us will like it. It's not the same as when we grew up, but every stadium that has the means and the willpower, they're going to do it. They're all going to do it. All those amenities are coming to all of the biggest programs in the country. Yeah, that's yeah, but I mean, again, they get used to 
looking like a champions club, but on the sidelines where you can actually see it, not just on extra points. I suspect though, again, if it's 13, I hope so. 13, I hope they're not, or I hope they're not uh, designing it like that. I hope that's, well, that's what I don't higher know. up maybe where you can't see it uh, from the camera angle. Well, Jeff's going to go take the tour and he'll tell us next week. I will let you guys know. Um, I believe FSU is already a perennial contender, at least to make the playoffs as Jeff Suggested. I did suggest that. This is from Corey. Do you think their ability to become Georgia, Alabama, or Ohio State caliber is on the other side of a new conference announcement and payout? So, Real quick, does that, does that Corey have an E or no? Uh, this Corey, let me go back to it. He, he does have an E, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, Corey, I like it. I like we'll it. take your question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, well, go ahead and answer, Jeff. Uh, no, I listen, I think they can get there now to sustain it and to continue to play at that level. They will need the, the money of the Super 2. Uh, but they're headed in that direction already. My What he's referencing is I said on the show that I thought Florida State in a very short period of time, the way we talk about Florida State has changed. Uh, and, and I think for now, for the foreseeable future permanently, what's, what Florida State – was two years ago was a team that desperately needed to have a good year and they went 10 and three then we said can they take the next step forward and improve upon that win the conference and we thought make the playoff uh well they went 13 and 0 won the conference and should have made the playoff if they hadn't been screwed right now the way we talk about this team going into the season isn't are they good they are good they're really good everybody knows that there's no argument whether florida state's a good football team i think that universally they would be thought of as a good football team, very good football team. I think we're arriving at a place where the annual question is, are they good enough to win the championship, the national championship? Are they that caliber of team? Because that is the way that you talk about Georgia. That is the way that you talk about Ohio State. And that is the way that until recently you've talked about Alabama and, and, and teams like that. So has Florida State taken that next step where the only thing we question isn't whether they're good, just like the 90s, it's, are they national championship good? And he well, wants to know, can we get there without being in the big two? Yeah, we could get there, but you couldn't sustain it. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. there now, and you're not in the big two, I think. Um, yeah, but the difference in money hasn't really kicked in yet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. so that's why, yeah, the, Jeff's answer is right. You can get there because you're there. You're already living that life. It's just 2028, if you're still in the ACC, you're probably not living that life. And Norvell, quite honestly, probably isn't here in 2028 if you're not in one of those big conferences, I would think. And I think they will be. But I, I, I will say this, though. I think every now and again it's good to pinch ourselves and recognize two, two, three years ago you were certainly not anywhere close to talking about whether or not the difference between this team and the team before is whether or not they're national championship good. Like, we right. were just like, can we have a good year? Yeah. Can yeah. this team can you get to a bowl? <laughs> can you get to a bowl and win a bowl? Can you have a non-losing <laughs> season? Yeah. Do you guys think that – what Alabama did and then what Georgia's doing and what Clemson did for a while. Like, is that going to be less common though in this era where every yes. guy players can transfer every year? Correct. Yeah. Well, and also when we have two super conferences, you're going to have teams who have three losses that are really good teams. Well, it's well, and they can still get in the playoffs. I, I think I mean. that, uh, um, I think Ira, I think it's just going to be like the NFL, man. Like, obviously, you know, the Chiefs are going to be good next year because of their quarterback, but they're not overwhelming. I know they won the Super Bowl, but they're not beating everybody 30 to six. They had the Even fourth the great best teams. offense in the league last year. They had yeah. a lot of games they should have lost. They did lose five well, or six. And they won some. Well, they, their defense was better than their offense for a lot of the year. Yeah. But, like, I just think that's how you look at it. Like, I don't know, man. With Kirk Cousins, the Falcons might win 11 games next year. I, I'm pretty confident they're not going to win the Super Bowl. But like that's, I think that's what college football will look like. Is the is the parity will get to a point where a special season is, you know, like a thirteen and like for NFL, a great team is thirteen and four, and you may you hope to make a run in the playoffs. I think that's, but it goes from year to year. Like the Bucks won a Super Bowl, whenever that was four years ago. That's that's crazy. They made the playoffs this year. Jeff before the season was hoping they'd get the number one pick in the draft. Yeah. They ended up being good enough to go to the playoffs and like, win a playoff just, game and right. lose by seven in the second. They almost went to the NFC championship. Yeah, nobody game. cares about the Tampa Bay. Bucks, just letting you know, nobody you mean, cares. by the way, you also misrepresented the bucks. Not only did they make the playoffs score, they won the division again 
which is right. what they do every year these days. Which is, so just let's point out that they well, are consistent it's, it's, division winners. What a, as what well. a gr- I mean, in and, and a great division it is, really. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, hey, a division. I can't, I can't help it if the Falcons can't live up to a standard that the <laughs> right. Bucks set the Bucks year obsessed. to year. You know, you just got to get better. Fair. By the way, I was thinking about it. Even if the Champions Club Part Two is <laughs> right behind the sideline and it's big, the TV cameras are behind it. So you wouldn't really be able to see it that much anyway. You'd be seeing the other side. And aren't the other side, they're not doing that, right, Ira? Not like, anytime soon, yeah. Okay, right. So the other side will still look like a college football stadium. Also, one of the amenities with the new stadium renovation is that, A, you got bigger seats that are more comfortable, and you just press a little button and people bring you your beer and your food. Mm-hmm. That would and be it's, nice. And it's well, that, free. It's true. It's true. You know, what, I, you know what I would like? Honestly, I was thinking about this at well, uh, at Hauser the last time I was there. It's like, why don't we have – should we not have our pictures on the video board? Like just a rotating ad when they're playing their the – three, The three pieces. of us? Like, hey, don't forget Seminole Headlines every Tuesday on yeah. 93.3 and YouTube yeah. TV. Like, you think we, Florida State wants she, to do that, do you? I think, she, I think they'll put anything up if you pay them enough. You know, hey, maybe yeah, they'll, 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 look at us. Who are those, who are those guys? Look at the hair we had, Jeff. Corey, what were you doing? I, man, look, I blame Shanna, and I will always blame Shanna. I, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. If you put this picture back up, what's great about this is Corey is considerably younger than me, and look at where my hair was in my right. mid-40s, and look at Corey. Jesus, Lord. I know. Look, Leonard was uh, younger than both of us there. I had black hair for the most you part. Had, you had a lot of it, and you had black hair aside from that one little stretch there? That yeah. was uh, circa, what, 1995, that picture? <laughs> 2001? No. Yeah, it was uh, uh, 11 some time or 12. ago. Probably was... 2011, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know what was going on with the hair, gang. I don't I, – and I apologize to anybody. I just like that me. you boldly rocked it. You, you you just walked out there like, hey, you see this? This is normal? This is it? what I do. <laughs> this is it Man. right here. This is what yeah. you get when you get me. Deal with oh, it. Oh, boy. He's crazy. like, I'll get on a stage with this. With yeah, bright I'll, lights. I'll let people look at me in public <laughs> like this. Corey, Corey's like Brock Glenn, though. He's got that confidence. It doesn't matter yeah. the situation. You can be losing like, 63 to 3. True. It doesn't matter. Were you moosing the few that were on top? Did you moose those few? I had, I yeah. It would take me about twenty minutes every morning with the product <laughs> to get the product just right to look like that. Yeah, of course. Seminal headlines, ninety three three Real Talk Radio War Chat TV continues in a moment. system doesn't check with you before it takes a break that's why we're always ready to help any day anytime anywhere and with our annual service agreement there are no overtime charges ever at bear no heating and air we will always be there for you there no heating and air conditioning have you been injured on interstate 10 i'm jimmy Fasig of Fasig brooks law offices we've partnered with road Pro- to access all interstate traffic cameras along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Let us help you get the proof you need to stand up for yourself and get fair compensation for your injuries. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Basic Brooks, 850-777-7777, offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Appleyard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. Here's another remarkable success story from QC Kinetics. This one from Chad, who hurt his knee at the gym one day, and it just kept on hurting for months. From my high school football and wrestling days, I already had a little bit of damage in there, but this just sent it over the edge. Chad tried traditional treatments with no improvement. When he turned to the non-surgical regenerative treatments at QC Kinetics. It was really fascinating how they did their work, and the science behind it was very intriguing, and it works. Extracting the cure out of my own body blew my mind. It's like I'm brand new again. It was fantastic. That's because the QC Kinetics natural biologic treatments use your body's own healing power to restore damaged tissue in your hips, shoulders, back, and knees, providing long-lasting relief. Now I'm back at the gym. I'm 100% feeling great. If you're tired of suffering with pain from arthritis or injury, call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. 
Call QC Kinetics, 850-391-4280. That's 850-391-4280. 850-391-4280. Social Kitchen is now open on Cary Forest Parkway near Ology Northside. Tallahassee's only premier market where you can receive the famed Snake River Farm steaks and premier meats. Social Kitchen also has chef-prepared meals and sides ready to serve in just under 20 minutes. Perfect for those very busy springtime weeks, weekends, you name it. Hosting some people at the house. Hey, Social Kitchen also has build-your-own charcuterie boards and catering. Stop in and visit Social Kitchen today or visit us online at socialkitchentlh.com. Socialkitchentlh.com. Man, I just got a text from my wife. She wants me to cook dinner and then snuggle on the couch next to a roaring fire. So what's the problem, Dave? You already got the new grill, and you're a great cook. I got one major problem. We don't have a fireplace. Man, that's an easy fix. Just call Hearth and Patio. They got a lot of fireplaces that can help you for your romantic evenings. Wood, gas, electric, and a ton of different sizes, man. Call Hearth and Patio today, 850-727-4282, or visit them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and Patio, ignite that spark in your life. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Back to headliner questions. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, I believe, no, we're at that one. Good day, fellas. Have a poll on the boards asking, 2014 versus 2023 team head-to-head at full health. Who wins? Hmm. Uh, I'll say 2023 just because of the uh, the makeup I mean, 2024, obviously, was a good team, but, yeah. you know, they just, they were always on the teetering on disaster. Um, so if I had to pick somebody, I'd pick. Well, look, uh, the the 2014 team turned the ball over more, a lot more. And, you know, I know the players probably aren't better, but the 2023 defense was much better than the 2014 defense. Yeah, the players weren't, but the. Yeah, the, the, the product overall was, product yeah. was. Right. Yeah, if it's a regular season game week five or something like that, I'm probably taking 2023. If it's a game that means something and 2014 cares to show up. Well, I, I mean, the only time that that happened. No, they turned it over a gazillion times. And they were better. But than also Oregon, the, the year of the game, I was thinking about the week before. I mean, they had to beat Georgia Tech to get in the playoffs and they gave up five touchdowns to that team. I don't think they cared. They were weird. Well, that's man. crazy. The, the 30 for 30 we all need is the nightlife of that 2014 team. Because, man, I, you heard some stuff at the time, and you hear some more stuff later. Man, that team enjoyed – they were they were almost NFL players in Tallahassee yeah. in 2014. Yeah. So I think they had a lot of fun, and uh, those are the stories I want to hear from that season. I had a lot of fun, and despite all of their foibles, they went undefeated, and then that right. freakish game against Oregon, which is still weird to me. But um, All right, it's early, writes Go Knowles, but who starts at linebacker in Dublin? DJ Lundy for sure. Are I, we gonna we're run, we're thinking a four three to start out with, even though they do yeah. mostly four no, two. I, yeah, I would say no, four no, two. No, no, I would just have four two. two. Back four two. Yeah. Right now, I'm leaning uh, Crier. Although you know what, they may go four three just because if Georgia Tech Georgia is Tech, running the ball. Yeah. Um, you're I leaning Crier. Crier. I don't hate it. I like Crier. Come leaning, on, man. I'm leaning Crier as well. By the way, boys, I think he's had a good camp to start. Could be Cryer, uh, could be could be my guy Omar. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, could be Murphy. OJ, OJ. But yeah, yeah, I might go with Cryer. I I go with Cryer and Murphy. Cryer and DJ. Yeah, Lundy. They they have Lundy on the field. I think. Yeah, I think there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, especially Georgia on first Tech, down. Yeah, on first down. If Georgia Tech's going to start throwing the ball, though, Lundy's coming off the field quick. So it'll be interesting. It'll be I, I, it'd be nice to have options. That'd be that'd be good. Yeah. Uh, watching the highlights from 2019. What do you think every time when Cryer makes a tackle, do you play Crying by Aerosmith? That's 30 years old, and it's certainly not one of their better songs. Or do you play the sound of a baby crying every time he makes a tackle near the line of scrimmage? (laughs) 
I might go with neither. Can, can I pick <laughs> C? No, you, it's one of the two, Ira. How about if you go with like a subtle reference, play Tears of a Clown? Oh, okay. Uh, it's not bad, but then you're calling him a clown, I think, somehow. I, we don't want that. I think you have like a baby crying. Like, and, and play it every time. Try to make it as annoying as Clemson's like a, baseball. Like a Clemson baseball game. So if he By has way, 13 tackles, you you just hear baby crying incessantly that game. That would get old. Yeah, that would get old. Oh, uh, no. Justin writes, what does Ira do when we hire Tony Bennett as our next basketball huh. coach? Would he retire or turn into, turn into John Wick? Oh, man. Uh, yeah. You Good know what I like? That's not Can happening. I tell you something? I like that the nation has caught on to that nonsense in Charlottesville. They... The way they play, not the person he is, just the way they play. No, I'm sure he's a lovely man. I'm saying that the the way they play is criminal. It's bad for basketball. It's been called out as such. Yeah. I've even heard announcers on like Sirius XM saying, I know he won a national championship, but this is bad for basketball. I can't watch it. Well, and it's also, from a consistency standpoint, bad for making runs in the NCAA tournament. They had the one miracle run, but four of the last five, they got bounced in the first round um the uh my my highlight probably my finest moment i've ever i texted Corey afterwards in aslan i don't know if i've ever been happier on twitter for a reaction when i tweeted about the game the other day when it was 23 22 at halftime and i tweeted about it and i said only T- tony bennett could appreciate this derwin kitchen gave me uh the laughing emoji back i was pretty fired up that nice. Der- derwin appreciated it derwin had to play against that nonsense <laughs> yeah. he's been there long enough i think 23-22 in a Virginia game is close to the end. Like, that's yeah. not a half time. That's a yeah. cool, we're, it's that's the second the media that's timeout the of the second half. Yeah, yeah, we're on, <laughs> that's, a, that's a toughie. Uh, Walker writes, I was watching the highlights from the 2019 season when we played Arkansas in the opening round of the College World Series, and I saw Corey standing in the concourse. So yeah. to my question, how did we go on the run that year? Was it all offense or more lockdown pitching? Well, uh, so it st- it started in Athens with offense, like they just and then it ended the with ball. one to nothing and holding on for dear life trying to get a hit. But even in LSU, you remember they played that second game. It was like thirteen innings or something, and they, yes. nobody could score because they had uh, was it Valdez, Velez, Velez, Velez uh, was yeah. really good. Uh, but yeah, it started with offense, and then it ended with really good pitching. With Van Eck, Van Eyck and uh, and Parrish, I think pitched in that in LSU if series. You, if you recall, they really couldn't hit to save their life once they got to that stage. Like basically carried Correct. it over from the extra innings affair against LSU into the College World Series. I think they scored. I mean, they won the first game one to nothing, one to nothing on an unearned run, and then I think they scored one run the next two games. So yeah, it was, was that his name? Was it Van Eyck? Is that that guy's name? The CJ reliever? Van Eyck, I think. Man, yeah. he was awesome. Yeah, he, he was not, great. I guess he hasn't panned out in. The, in Pro baseball. Well, I haven't checked where his, he's at. He was filthy, man. Yeah, I, I, mean, I was gonna say give him a second, but that was five years ago. Yeah, it's a good point. I I don't know where he. I'll is look it up at the break. All right. Uh, Jerry asked a good question here. Will we know when Florida State and the ACC begin to negotiate, or is that something that will just happen in secret? Thanks for all you do. Go Knowles. That's a great question. I I don't think we'll know, but maybe there'll be whispers of it. Um. I would think it would. You can't keep anything quiet these days, even at the, even with the threat of penalty and everything else. It's just it somehow it leaks out. It's a good Poss- question. Possibly. I mean, you know, Texas and Oklahoma didn't leak out. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know. It'll be. Uh, it's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a good feel for it because we've never seen anything like this before. This Florida State's the first school. Clemson's the second to sue to get out of a grant of rights. Um, yeah. So there's no way to know how. To, like I don't know if it's. If if both sides would have numbers, um, you know th- that they're that they're that they want to throw out there, and if they both reach the same number, the the discussions are over in a minute. Or if it's you know a long protracted thing. If it's a long protracted thing, then obviously uh, you think something would leak out. Did you see the? Uh, I think it was, it must have been the NC State game because uh, every time they showed Keats or Shire, you could see Jim Phillips in the background on press row or right behind them. And, you know, he's got a team. He's got a team making a miracle run that's great for the conference. It shows that the conference was much better than anybody gave it credit for during the season. And he just looked – maybe it's just his resting face, but he just looked completely miserable. Just no smiles, not talking to anyone, just 
looked like 10, 20 things working around in his mind. He did have an orange tie to show his support for the uh, the Tigers, though. Maybe that's what I was. No, he was he was at the NC State game the next day. Yeah. So, yeah. And he just not a lot of smiles. Not I don't think he enjoys being the commissioner of the ACC, guys. I don't, I don't think he likes would the job. You, would you? Yeah. Uh, well, I think I would settle in knowing I'm paid handsomely to do nothing. Yeah. yeah. I've been a miserable failure, and I'm still pulling – well, hey, in the six figures, the check's still clear, baby. Well, yeah. Whether Florida State leaves or not, his checks are still clear, and for the time being, yeah, he was allowed to live in La La Land and project all kinds of fantasy, and nobody called yeah. him on his nonsense. And there he was, just getting paid while everybody was duping him around every turn. Yeah, that's a good gig if you can get it. Right. My goodness, amen. Um, who will have the better fan experience in 2025? UF watching its fourth consecutive losing season. Or Miami kicking off at six on CW, followed by an all new episode of Batwoman. <laughs> is there really a Batwoman? I don't know. Probably not. But that I've never is heard fantastic. Of and that's from Trailer Swift. <laughs> Batwoman. That's funny. That's uh, really good. So, yeah. So, obviously, that, they'll, and they'll, if it's 2025 and they had a losing season this year, which we expect Florida certainly could could have with that schedule. Seems likely, Corey. Seems They're likely. probably not going to be good in 25 either with a first-year the, coach. But they'll have some excitement around a first-year coach. You're right. There's always, right. There's always yeah. a, some hope. So. They've done a lot of these new first-year coaches lately. They, they get to do this every few years. Just a few years go by, get to start over with that enthusiasm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> just rejuvenate the fan base again. <laughs> with likable guys. Always hiring these guys that are likable, that rally the fan base. If Like uh, will... McIlwain and – in Napier. There's been a feeling that Miami, you know, again, like that they, they're not joining the lawsuit. They voted to accept Stanford and Cal and like, they seem to be content to ride it out for a little while in the ACC. But could you imagine that reality? Like as, as, as trailer Swift was asking, like if Florida state and Clemson were to leave the conference and say North Carolina and Miami stuck in that conference, whatever the hell that's going to become, it'd be awesome. Could you, I mean, how, how demoralized would that fan base be? It'd be even more They'd demoralized. Stop showing up. When, They'd stop showing up yeah. to games, Ira. Yeah. You're, you're, you're worried about the attendance? Yeah. yeah. It'd be even more demoralized when four years after Florida State, Clemson, and North Carolina have left, they still hadn't captured the ACC title. <laughs> right. That'd be tough. They're like, why is SMU steady winning conference yeah. titles? This it's, is ridiculous. It's always SMU versus Syracuse in the <laughs> ACC championship game. Miami's on the outside looking in. Here we go again. SMU, Virginia for the conference <laughs> title. <laughs> Meanwhile, Miami's like, damn it, man. Come when on, is the Mario? next Batwoman? When does Batwoman come on? <laughs> Do you guys, Timmy wants to know, uh, think that Trevor Jackson will stay as a walk-on while he's here at FSU? Uh, like stay, like be, like he won't get a scholarship? Will he stay? Uh, will he is that the around? question? Will he I stick guess. around without, well, being a, without being a scholarship kid? Whatever the question is, if he's not on scholarship a year from now, I think he'll be gone. I mean, I think yeah. he's talented. He's a talented. He, he can is play. talented. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. I think he's. I think he spins it. I love watching yeah. him throw the football. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like him too. Just as a kid, watching the way he carries himself, I like him a lot. It's funny. There was a couple of high school coaches standing next to me at uh, one of the practices last week, and one of the, they were arguing about the fact that Trevor Jackson came to Florida State as a walk on, and they were like mad at him. Yeah. They were like, "Why did he yeah. do this?" You know? Yeah, they they. There's no doubt that kid. He's. I think they will put him on scholarship, but um, if they don't, I don't think he'll stay for too long. Yeah, he's good. He's down. He's he's uh, he's impressive so far for sure. Man, what a an abundance of riches! If somehow a year from now you have all of the quarterbacks that are currently on this roster not named say DJ, right? Like if all those three guys are still there, well, you know that's not it. it it's not happening. It's possible. Come on. It's possible. So you would have Brocklin, Croman Hawk, and Jackson. Well, they also have a kid in this class, right, that's coming in. That's who I was thinking of. Don't they have the Chandler? Uh, Trent, they have Tr Trammell. Is, is oh, yeah, yeah. But he's coming in this class coming up, yeah, right? Yeah, so you'd have yeah. four scholarship quarters. I just, I'm just saying that doesn't happen anymore. Right. I was thinking of that kid coming in too. Trammell Jones? 
Yeah. More headliner questions momentarily. 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Talent. Tallahassee loves the corner pocket. Ready for a breath of fresh air this tax season? Well, breathe easy with EB Heating and Air. Don't miss out on federal tax incentives for new AC systems and heat pumps. Take advantage of up to $2,000 in tax credits, plus additional savings from city and manufacturer rebates. EB Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Tallahassee and surrounding areas since 1974. Call us today for your free estimate at 850 575 9119. Or visit us online at enbheatandair.com. That's enbheatandair.com. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Cl- Back to it. Let's get it. Uh, will we ever get the full story rights, Richard, on the injuries to the offense last year? Do you think more transparency would have increased the public perception of how good that offense could have been if healthier for a college football playoff run? Uh, I, there's there wasn't a lack of transparency. It's just that no program is going to tell the opposing team that half their roster is littered, you know, riddled with injury. And a lot of the guys were playing through it. They yeah, were just at most. 60%, 70%, 80%. So, I mean, there was nothing to hide. They just got unlucky. They call it injury luck for a reason. They just got very unlucky. And when you think about skill position players in particular, you have injuries. Now, obviously you had the terrible injury to Jordan Travis, which is tragic, but like at wide receiver, you had one of the fastest players on your roster really severely hurt his ankle. Well, he's done. I mean, you're done at that point. That takes a long – if you have a high ankle sprain, it takes a long time to heal that. Then you have, you know, another receiver who is not blazing but had good speed dealing with whatever it was, thigh contusion, bone bruise, whatever. He couldn't let it loose. Then you had Hakeem who couldn't let it loose. He well, just Jaheim, had so Jaheim many guys. Jaheem was – uh Oh, he was hurt all year with the ankle. His ankle was all messed up. So Johnny had the concussion issues. Yeah, and he missed two and a half games. So you just, I mean, look, they took turns, but the the bigger problem too was that, yeah, it was all seemingly on one side of the ball, but the other part was like they were the kinds of injuries that allowed you to play, but just not play at a hundred percent. So you just didn't get anything close to peak or optimal production out of guys that you you know thought could really be do more for you well so just, the, but but the answer to the question is no being more transparent wouldn't have mattered in public perception and gotten them in the playoff i don't i, I don't i don't think uh because I, I i'm of the opinion that even if jordan travis was on that team playing uh texas and alabama are your other two teams in that the only the only thing if, you, if, if florida state could go back and do anything differently from a perception standpoint I think it would have been some of the marketing things. It, so much of the marketing was based around John, you know, Keon, Jordan, Johnny, and Trey because those guys were so, you know, they had such a great start to the season and because they're dynamic players. But that turned all the attention to the offense. So then later in the year, when the yeah. defense really was carrying the team, that they didn't, nobody had that perception of Florida State, and I think that kind of hurt them when it came to at least fighting back at some of the the crap at the end of the right. year. ESPN was spewing. How many losses will it take for Florida baseball to be unranked? 20? Question mark from Austin. Yeah. Let me get again. They keep winning the weekend series. Barely. Yeah. Uh, two walk-offs coming from behind in the ninth inning both times, but they did it, and they won two out of three, so you're not going to drop when you win two out of three. T-Money Knowles. Afternoon, gents. Thoughts on Ashlyn Barker so far this spring? Kid looks super long and athletic. Yeah, he does. I really like him. He's one of those kids that I – I think very highly of they they've got a lot of guys like that though. in that secondary, that's why last hour, the three of us kind of thought that group could end up being better than it was a year ago. They've got a ton of athleticism and length. 
I feel like he's definitely in contention for that starting spot. Right. I mean, he's made a couple of uh, – he makes some – to me, he's made more flash plays than any of the other safeties that I've seen so far. That's not – uh, scientific opinion. It's just me, my own opinion, what I've seen in tracking the one-on-ones and seven-on-sevens. I think he's been the most impressive in that realm than the other guys, but there's a lot more to safety than just wowing Corey Clark. Chaco McNasty wants to know. <laughs> Finally. What's the, what's been the biggest surprise in camp so far? I mean, I mean, probably, probably Lucas is. I was going to say Jalen. Jalen Lucas is yeah. probably it. Yeah, um, and that, and we say that not to say that we know that he's going to be a guy that gets, you know, 150 touches or something this season. No. But but just in terms of like not knowing a guy, I mean, we just had no idea that he was going to be this kind of an athlete. Um, he's fast as hell. Yeah. It's fun to watch. He, he looks shot out of a cannon every time. It's crazy. Yeah. And a uh, legit football player. Yeah. 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 He's it's fun to watch, and I. I said, you know, I think that'll be a fan favorite because he's going to make big plays. Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, he's going to be a big play machine. He's 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 pretty funny to watch. Um, so those little feet go a thousand miles per hour. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, Master Chief Noel pointed out what you pointed out, Corey, in a question. He was pointing out that Jim Phillips did not look like he wanted to be there at mm. all. No. And um, yeah, but then they also point out that nobody can root for NC State because Boo Corrigan. It's fair. I like I like the DJ kid, but it's fair. I I, I get it. I, who do they play? Do they play? They play Purdue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah DJ Purdue. Burns against yeah. uh, Edie. Edie, which they, I didn't realize that Edie was so lightly recruited coming out of high school. He's been in college since I think I was like fifteen. Right. So I forgot his recruiting process. He was only a three star, and his offers. If you go back, his offers were not very impressive. Purdue obviously nailed that one. Yeah. Um. When is that game? That is Saturday at six o'clock. Yeah. Oh, uh, do we just think Purdue? I mean, excuse me. Do we just think UConn's going to win the national championship by continuing to bludgeon people by thirty? No, Alabama's got a shooter's chance because they do have all got. All, if they get hot from three, you know, how many points would I have to give you for you to take Alabama? Fifteen. <laughs> I mean, the spread is like twelve. They got, they got a hell of a chance, don't they, Corey? Well, I'm saying they got a shooter's, shooters chance. They they got shooters, and if they go like the way they shot against Clemson in the second half was nuts. Uh, Clemson kept scoring, and it didn't matter because Alabama had hit a three on the other end. And PJ Hall was sad there at the end of the game. I will say this on that note because Al, some Alabama sh uh, shot selection in the first half of that game, in some of these games, I'm mean, like Houston's offense. Is that what just is that the problem with college basketball now? Like. Everybody just throws up crazy ass shots. Like that Houston no, offense is ridiculous. What, it's like it's it's like it's designed. Hey, you're looking for a 12 foot off balance jumper. Like <laughs> yeah, I thought you want analytics, a hand in your face. You want everything contested. You got to be fading away from the basket. <laughs> I thought analytics was like layups and threes. I thought that's what Alabama threes. is. That's what Alabama is. Yeah. But, these some of these teams take the worst freaking shots. Well, I will say Alabama is also. Does. You're right, Corey. Alabama's offense can be fun, but that's also the skinniest group of kids, man. That they're going to get pushed around. They're going to struggle. Is... Hey, I'm not saying they're not going to struggle on defense a little bit. UConn might push them around, but they do have a chance if they get hot from three to at least be in the game, and then maybe the game pressure gets to UConn because they seem to struggle with that. Steve wants to know. First of all, he writes, "Yay, sausage." Sam Cassell, new basketball coach. Any chance? I think there's a chance. I, everything we hear is he's got an interest. Um, well, which is good because I was wondering about that because he yeah. I, maybe he's getting the idea that he's never going to be an NBA head coach is what I would think. And then it's like, well, I, unless he goes and does well at Florida State, then maybe, I guess. But so because I always thought he's an NBA guy. He was here for 18 months, but he's he's from Baltimore. He's been in the NBA now for three decades. I just thought he was an NBA guy and wasn't really a college basketball guy. I just, and I, I don't know that anybody specifically, I haven't heard from specific, specifically from people who heard that from him, but I think there's a perception because he's been around a lot more the last oh, year or two yeah. than he had been in the past. I got a quick Sam Cassell story real quick. Let's it's go. not a great story, but it's my only Sam Cassell story. After 9 11, the first <laughs> time. What a way to start I, a story. The, yeah, first, the first time I, uh, flew after I had a I was supposed to take a trip right around that time for work and it got obviously postponed and then it got rescheduled for like a month later whenever it was we resumed flying and I was flying out of BWI I was working in Maryland at the time and I was flying out of BWI and I walked into the airport 
and it was like a ghost town. Like it was kind of like COVID. I mean, September yeah. 11th, same thing. Like there was just nobody in the airport except Sam Cassell comes walking at me. And I had never covered Florida State at that point. And I literally, I think I screamed, Sam oh. Cassell. <laughs> <laughs> I think I startled him, but he could not. He could, it could not have been nicer. But just, well, he would have been in the league. He was still playing at that point. But I think been. it was, uh, yeah, I think it was just, it was like an off weekend. It might, oh, have, been okay. yeah, yeah. It might have been an oh. all-star break. Or I just like, like that Ira, who would never do that now, went, yeah. Sam no, Cassell. Yeah. It's crazy <laughs> to think of Ira ever doing that, in period, in yeah. any, any way. Yeah, I was pretty excited. <laughs> I did that one time to Bruce Willis at a champs and I don't think he appreciated it. He had a huge beard and a hat on and he was uh, looking at shoes and I realized it was him. And I went, Bruce Willis. And he like looked pissed off yeah. and everybody just started to, yeah, I kind of, <laughs> he probably yeah, did appreciate that. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Um, all right. Henry writes a good question here. You boys at Warchan are obviously very adept and experienced at covering no athletics in your respective formats. How has covering the lawsuit challenged your practices and how you go about reporting? Well, that, I, I let Ira do it. Yeah, I was going to say, Corey just lets Ira do it, and you have to be deferential to lawyers. Yeah, that too, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the problem with all of this is, it's, and that's, it's funny, it's, it's funny he mentions that, because if you watch, if you watch the videos that we do or, or watch the interaction between FSU Twitter personalities slash attorneys slash media and then you watch some of the context from like the media that cover the Carolina uh, that are based in the Carolinas and cover the ACC. There's definitely a, cha a difference. You know, you'll see the the arguments make a lot more sense for Florida State uh, people that Florida State's making, and the arguments up there make a lot more sense for uh, that the ACC is making. So yeah, I mean, it's impossible because you see it from the perspective of who you cover, and yeah. and so I mean, yeah, does it test our objectivity sure but i think all none of this is like cut and dry um so i think you just see it based on who you you know you you've heard their side of the story to I your know. point by the way I, I heard something the other day and i realized i'm biased but i just rolled my eyes and couldn't just shook my head i was listening to a college football show on sirius xm and this woman was downright angry at florida state and clemson and she kept repeating you guys signed the contract you signed the contract. What is this nonsense? Nobody can just break a contract. And I'm like, have you paid attention to anything yeah. in college athletics? The what the hell are you talking yeah. about? How is a producer not in her ear going, you sound like an idiot? Yeah, well, in, in our life, people break contracts all the time. It just happens. You want better deals. You do it all the time. Bizarre, though. She just like, hey, this is yeah. crazy. I mean, you they have to stay there till 2036. They signed the deal. Like, are you listening to any of the complaints? No. I will, I will say this. When you read some of the documents, and this is, it really hit me with some of the first filings, you know, you realize that there, there, where there, I think there is some objectivity is some of the arguments Florida State's making or has made. Some of them, I'm like, yeah, eh, I don't yeah, know if sure, you know, sure. but other ones, I'm like, oh, that's a great point. Like, what? Yeah. How well, did the ACC let the this kitchen happen? sink at him? Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, as many things. What as is possible. the deal with Chad? What is the yeah. deal with Chad? What's going on with Chad? How does he keep failing upwards? What's happening here? <laughs> What's I don't like this. Chad? This seems fishy. Poor Chad. Or, for hey, did Ira you ask and, any Facebook questions? No, not one. Didn't have a chance. Oh, did you really not? Of course. I literally did not, no. Great. I'm glad Corey. I woke up from a dead sleep la uh, early this morning. It was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to ask Facebook. I forgot to post on Facebook for you to not ask a single you question. You posted it I, in Hey, the you got the night? Chaco McNasty yeah, like at 2.30 in the morning. Hey, you know how many questions there were, Corey? Three. <laughs> any? How many <laughs> were there? There was, there was seven. Um, <laughs> hey, that's something. I didn't. I didn't get to him. Sorry about the seven. Uh, Listen, he's just admitting what we all have known. Twitter, yeah. the Twitter headliners are superior, yeah. and he's finally he's finally just put that out in the open. For Ira and Corey, I'm Jeff. Good job, Tom, as well. Be good, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.